from San Francisco, it's The Cube, covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Welcome back to The Cube, and we are pleased to have our first guest here today. He is a customer of Databricks, and also doing some exciting things with Spark. So welcome, Nathan Murath, our Senior Software Development Manager from Autodesk. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you. Are you happy to be here? Absolutely, very exciting. <laughs> is this your Great. first Spark Summit? It is, absolutely, yep. Yeah, first time here, first time at a Spark Summit. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of people, a lot of energy, so I'm very happy to be here. Well, before yeah. we dive into some of the exciting things you're doing with Spark, maybe tell me, Tell me what you were hoping to learn at this summit. Um, I think I won't, I'm really interested in learning what's coming next. Um, you know, Autodesk is a technology company. We build products, we build software, and we're always looking at the future, figuring out what we can build and what we can, you know, leverage this amazing technology for uh, in our own, you know, tools that we we then offer to our customers. And did you just attend the keynote? I did. And what did you think? What stood out to you? Um, a lot of interesting things that I want to go home and try, basically, or take back to the office and and, and try, because some, you know, a lot of these things are very applicable to what we're uh, doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So. All right, we've also got George Gilbert on the show, and George, we're going to dig in a little bit. Uh, maybe you have a question for Nathan about what he's doing with. Uh... Yeah, Nathan, like, you know, for those of us who are antediluvian. Um, in other words, having been born before the big flood that floated Noah's Ark, um, what was? Tell us about the types of the types of products that um, Autodesk builds and and how Spark helps people who use those tools. Sure. So Autodesk is a company. We do a lot of different things, right? Autodesk primarily uh, build software for the, the design and make space in, in three or four different um, verticals and disciplines. One is media and entertainment, one is manufacturing, one is architecture, engineering, and construction. Um, the group that I'm a part of and the, the um, software that our team is responsible for building is mainly around the cloud and mobile products for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. Um, specifically, we have a suite of products um, that we brand BIM 360 that basically are uh, tailored to the construction industry and various you know, personas and various steps depending on where you are in the life cycle of building a vertical structure, you know, a bridge, a hospital, a stadium, and we provide software for, for those individuals. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that life cycle and then um, you know, the life cycle of a project like that and where Spark can help um, customer who's thinking you know, 360 and not a particular product. Absolutely, I mean, so the life cycle is pretty complex, but it starts usually on, on a computer like this where you'll design you know, your, your building or your structure, whatever it is, um, you know, heavy 3D graphics, that's where Autodesk, the company, started. You know, from that point on, you do a number of you know, coordination exercises with the various disciplines in um, you know, a construction project, so your architecture, your, your structural, your plumbing, your heat ventilation, air conditioning, people that are all specific disciplines, then you actually go on site and you start building this structure, whatever it may be. Um, and when you build, you know, the building process that typically could take multiple months to multiple years, depending on how, how large the structure is, is when um, people are going to start leveraging um, you know, some of our tools even more. Typically, some of the things that we see a lot of is when you're managing a construction site, you will see on a day, daily basis, you know, hundreds probably, if not thousands of construction issues. You know, the, uh, this, uh, you know, sheet of glass here is broken, the drywall is, you know, fell off, this beam is going through a wall, you name it, you know, construction <laughs> site problems happen every day. You want day. to know if the beam's going through the wall. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, so typically that generates a lot of data and to the point where our customers uh, can possibly feel overwhelmed by their own data because there's just so many things that get generated uh, in our system. So. so this sounds, it actually sounds like where um, IT operations is the, you know, the discipline of I've got all this infrastructure you know, and I'm getting all these alerts when little things go wrong and you know, I don't know where the necessarily the root cause is or what I should attack first. Is that sort of what you're? It's where we're going. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, we're tackling. You know, we're starting. We're at still early stages with you know kind of the machine learning, data science, you know, um, applications to to the products that we do um, and build. But 
Um, right now what we're tracking, we're just trying to help our customers gain insights on their own data. So when you're swimming in this vast ocean of data and you don't know where to start, or typically a construction site the size of a stadium or a campus or you know, a, you know, a huge you know, office building, you don't know where to start typically. What, so right? what does this vast pool of data look like and how specifically do, are you using Spark to help make sense out of it or prioritize what you should look at? So a, a lot of what we're doing now is we're using image data and text data. So what happens is your, your superintendents when they walk around a construction site to figure out you know, what's going on, what's broken, what's working, what should I focus on today. They will walk around with our mobile devices, your, or, or their mobile devices using our, our uh, mobile software, and take you know, pictures and write descriptions of things that they see walking around the construction site. Um, so they've generated hundreds of thousands of these construction issues, and where we're leveraging you know, Spark um, is to help um, you know, build classification models on top of that data, be it image and uh, textual data, to help you know, bring to the surface and bring to the top the things that are most critical to um, our customers. Typically, one example is on a construction site, any problem that's related to water is usually considered a big problem. <laughs> um, so if we can help you know, among hundreds of thousands of issues that happen on a construction site kind of identify what, uh, hey, Mr. Superintendent, you have these 10 problems that are related to water, whatever they may be, you should probably focus on those first. And that's where we're leveraging you know, um, things like um, you know, Spark, uh, you know, technologies, machine learning, data science to, to build our products. And, and are, you, um, are you learning from all the customers who use the product, or in other words, do you need their data get, to get smarter, or, or is it rules that you're building? We are, so right now we're working with a subset of our customers through which you know, we've gone into a number of agreements where they were okay with uh, us you know, working with them very closely to you know, possibly use some of their data that was generated in our you know, tools and systems to help them, you know, uh, to help build our, our model. So we're absolutely not looking at and you know, the entire data set per se. Mm -hmm. Did you see in the um, did you see anything in the in the keynote with the structured streaming that's now down to a millisecond, which is truly you know impressive for Spark, or in the deep learning that might simplify traditional machine machine learning? Did you see any anything there that looks like it might have an impact on the on the type of app you could build? Very much so. So I think in all the the streaming applications are very relevant because more and more on the construction sites, or more and more construction sites are being censored with, uh, you know, whether it's you know webcams, you know cameras, temperature detection, dust detection, air quality detection, IOT. <laughs> exactly, IoT all over the place. So when we can start collecting the data from those devices, you know, streaming into our systems, we can more proactively, you know, notify, warn. Uh, our customers, people on site, either security risk, um, you know, any you know, danger situation, or simply this is happening right now on your construction site, you might have to wake up because it's the middle of the night and go you know, check out what's going on. This is, this is actually of great interest to us because one of our themes now where customers are, are telling us that they're trying to figure out what type of analytics, especially like the machine learning training would happen in the cloud and what type of analytics would happen you know, on site or on customer premise. Are you, um, are you doing the training up in the Autodesk cloud and then are you doing, um, uh, would the models be evaluating and executing sort of on site close to where the data is being captured? So right now, again, you know, early stages. So a lot of those questions we're still trying to figure out and understand what What's best? What's best for customers? What uh, what's obviously the most secure and things like that. Um, a lot of the training that we're doing today is um, in the Autodesk cloud, so we use a lot of our cloud infrastructure where the data resides for our products, of course, to um, you know build and train our, our models essentially. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I wanted to dig into maybe some of the lessons learned. You said it sure. was early days, so yes. what are some things you could share with the community here on, on the Cube that would help them? Some of you maybe just getting started with, a, with Spark and some of the valuable lessons you've learned you, you'd want to share. Um, I, would say, I would say probably 
get started now is <laughs> probably my, my piece of advice. I think um, we're all going in this direction, a lot of technology, and it's interesting because even um, the, you know, the construction space that I'm in is maybe not considered the highest tech um, you know, discipline, which <laughs> your industry, which makes sense and is obvious. Uh, but even in the construction space, we're going in the direction of kind of using machine learning, data science, you know, spark-like technology. So I would say get started now. Um, that would be my piece of advice because um, there's a lot to learn and things move really fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so if you can complete this sentence, Spark has finally enabled Autodesk to blank and start with Spark. I'm trying to get a sound bite out of you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Spark has finally allowed Autodesk to uh, build, you know, <clears throat> valuable customer-facing, you know, ma machine learning and data science uh, products for, for our customers. Mm -hmm. um, so. And then the business outcomes for that are being closely watched by executive sponsors, or how, how is that working? They are, but again, early days, right? Any any large, you know, corporation like Autodesk, early days is a lot of moving parts. So we're still, you know, feeling the the waters of it now. Mm -hmm. but. All right, George, last question goes to you. Um, I guess, from what you've seen today, and any, anything you've, you've heard about also coming down the roadmap, how might you expand the application that you are building in terms of thinking new possibilities, pushing the boundary? Um, I think, so, Internet of Things is something that we're looking at, right? And I can very well foresee mm -hmm. being part of this, this solution and ecosystem, as well as just allowing, I think allowing our customers to push and pull their data into our systems to leverage our technologies or to pull it back out to plug it into their you know, BI tools or things like that. And I think that's something that at least for our enterprise customers you know, will be very valuable. All right, well Nathan Murath from Autodesk, thank you so much for spending Absolutely. some time thank here on theCUBE. We're going to let you get back to the show. It looks like the show floor is open now, so get out and uh, network with some of those 3,000 attendees. Perfect, thank you very All much. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you Thanks, for watching. Sir. We'll be back soon with more guests here on theCUBE.